Originally, my personal reasons for doing the blind challenge were probably more so for selfish reasons. I wanted to ride up Falls Creek, uh, and so I thought, great, here's an opportunity. But as uh, I've heard a little bit more about the, uh, the blind children over in uh, Thailand, uh, and just the, the position that they're in, of poverty, uh, it's, uh, my, I'd say my motives have changed, and yeah, it's uh, really good to be involved in something that that really uh, changes people's lives. Well, the reason we're here is to raise money for the May Sot Blind Centre in Thailand. This is a small school for blind children who come from great poverty and their families can't afford to educate them. So the idea was birthed that perhaps we could raise some money to help fund the school by hosting a tandem bike ride from Mount Beauty to Falls Creek. And the thing that makes this so unique is that a number of the tandem bikes have blind riders as their co-pilot. And so the ride is 32 kilometres and 1,300 metres in elevation. Oh, it's going to be a huge challenge, but really excited about it. And I guess we've just got to mentally prepare ourselves for all that climbing, really. And um, it'll just be a huge relief once we eventually get to the finish line and really a big accomplishment that we can say we've done it. A little bit nervous. <laughs> I hope we've done enough training, but you know, in the end, it's just as long as you get up the hill, it's all for a good cause. Oh, it's, it's going to be a tough ride. Look, it, you know, I've done it before, so I know I can do it. But it's still going to be tough. I, I guess I've got it a bit easier than the tandem riders though, but yeah. I'm really, really looking forward to it and uh, this week the excitement's been building and building and uh, the day's finally here. So the first time that Daniel and I went out for a ride, it was, uh, it was quite difficult. There's, as I mentioned, with the whole balance thing uh, and turning corners, obviously with, with uh, Daniel's vision impairment, um, but it's just a matter of clear communication. Uh, as we come to a corner, I say uh, left hand turn, whether it's a, uh, a sharp turn or an easy turn, and it, the main thing is the communication. Um, and to, uh, yeah, just, it, it took probably two or three times of us uh, riding on the bike pool for me personally to, to get used to the whole balancing and, and the confidence grew. Uh, and then once uh, that was all set aside, yeah, things became much easier. Oh, actually, the first time we went on the bike with Adam, I nearly took him out with a tree. <laughs> <laughs> but, but other than that, um, um, to be honest, it was actually quite easy to get on and ride, um, you know, besides turning and that. There's a few bits and pieces we had to sort out. But we, you know, myself and Adam clicked pretty quick. Um, and I think the best thing about all of this so far has been working as a team with Adam. Um, it's just been a lot of fun. You know, I get to know Adam pretty well and you know, become pretty good mates out of it. So, yeah, yeah and we're just, yeah, just, just loving that side of it. And you know, being, being part of something that's bigger than us, it's yeah. awesome. Really different experience. And for myself, who was sighted up until the age of 16, I used to do a lot of riding myself. and. That being, feeling of being in control on a single bike is a lot different to the idea of being on the back of a tandem where you don't have the control, you don't have the brakes, you can't, can't do the steering. So it is quite a different experience. And the first couple of times you do it, you've really got to learn to just trust the person you're with. But once you do and just sort of embrace it and go along for the ride, it's, it's really a lot of fun. And just the key is good communication between yourself and the front rider. And, just really enjoy the experience, I think. I've only been uh, riding for four months, and um, when I got on the back of the tandem with David, it, it was just um, such a sense of freedom. It was fantastic to feel the, the wind in your face, to feel uh, and to hear the birds singing, and, and uh, j just a sense of freedom. And you don't have to worry about uh, um, the steering and how that's going, because David takes care of that in the front. No, it's, it's uh, very liberating. The Maysot Blind Centre over in Thailand uh, is a wonderful institution. It, it's giving uh, children a, a chance to, um, to learn mobility and uh, braille and uh, yeah, just to get life skills uh, that we, we take for granted out here in Australia. But over there, it's, um, they don't know what to do with blind children in, this, uh, in that part of Thailand. And if there's no money, they don't get any training at all. So Boon's providing that sort of uh, 
uh, that sort of training for them and uh, they'll come through that school and they'll, they'll be uh, self-sufficient, they'll be uh, valued members of the community and able to, um, to, to earn their own money and it'll be just great. Every penny will be going to the Mayside Blind Centre. Um, any administration fees have been taken up by, by other people just putting in money to cover that. So everything raised, all donations go straight to the Mayside Blind Centre. It's stuff off being blind in such a lovely country like Australia, compared to some place like that, I would hate to be thinking that. It just, you've got so much opportunity in Australia and they've got nothing over there. Having heard the stories about um, the way disabled people and staff are uh, treated in different countries and the access to services that they have or don't have really, I guess, like we're so incredibly lucky in Australia, the support and stuff that we get, um, especially as vision impaired people through services such as Vision Australia and Guide Dogs and places like that, that we've got so much access to so much great services and great technologies and things that don't exist in places like Thailand. So I'm really excited about having this opportunity to give back in that way. This is a place where Burmese and Thai children who are blind and really have no way of succeeding in life, really, can find an education and can find a better way of life. And this wouldn't be possible if it wasn't for a young lady named Bun. And she's a very determined young lady. And she's had a marked uh, influence on a lot of people and uh, those people that are in this ride today. And she has a determination to make a difference in the lives of those young children. Probably the most challenging moment is, would be probably about two thirds up, more so a mental challenge, uh, where it just starts to get a little bit steeper. Uh, your, your legs are starting to get a little sore. Your, it's your head wants to give in, but your, your legs keep on going. I think just the whole thing mentally, it's not being able to see what's coming up ahead and not being able to know what the next hill is or how much further you've got to go is always sort of the real challenge for me I think on the back um, sort of you can't sort of prepare yourself for how big a climb you've got coming you've just got to keep pushing one foot in front of the other and know that eventually you got to get to the end I guess. Huge, uh, huge excitement for when we come around the last bend and saw the, the Pushy's tent and then everyone started cheering. It's like you've got this huge last boost of energy and yeah, it's a magical feeling, magical feeling. Coming into the car park when you've got everyone cheering was a very nice feeling. It um, gave you that big sense of accomplishment and yeah, just the feeling when everyone cheered was pretty awesome. And the guys seemed to really enjoyed it. The guys that come up from Melbourne, and they said well, they'll talk to their mates, come up next year. So hopefully we can make some more money next year. <laughs>